Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to talk about how you can make multiple small parts accurately and safely using the dashboard system. So in this case, I want to duplicate a bunch of these little parts that we use in our packaging uh, for benches. So I made some yesterday and we're going to just copy these. So I've got one of our uh, large full-size benches here set up with um, a couple outriggers on, um, some track stars on in between the outriggers to support the piece we're cutting. I've got a track star on each end. And so we're going to set this up in what we call the long rib configuration. Um, so just to give you um, an idea of how you arrange your rail, we have um, this little item called the spiral dog, um, which is a rail dog with a little spiral groove, and that just makes it easier to grab. So what that does is you're going to load that into your rail in the slot underneath and just tighten that down wherever it's appropriate, and then you're ready to go. So you'll put one in each end and then um, use it that way. So let's set this one aside. Um, you can see that I have this long rail all ready to go with spiral dogs in. And so what I want to do is just drop that in the center slot of these track stars. And the fit of that spiral dog in the slot is very precise. And that's going to keep the rail in a very careful, uh, carefully chosen location. So all you need to do is move the material you're cutting and your saw. Never move the rail. So now we want to set the dimension of the cut. And so this is where the rip gauge comes in handy. And so what we have here in the rip gauge is, and this is available in three sizes, uh, basically a plate and what we call the extension. So the plate has a tab. The tab represents the thickness of the blade on your saw. So we have these in three sizes, uh, 1.8 millimeters, 2.2 millimeters, and 2.4 millimeters, representing different blade thicknesses on different machines. And so what you do is you're going to loosen the knob here so the extension can move freely. And it's very simple to set the dimension you want. So I've got a tape measure here. And one way to do this is like, I want to rip this thing and it's 45 millimeters wide. I can do that with a tape measure or I can just duplicate the piece I already have. So you just want to set this here in this case, I'm going to just duplicate the piece I have, set this here so the tab is up against something, and then just push the extension back so it's nice and flush with the piece I want to cut. And this is how I duplicate it. So tighten that down, and now we're going to get the same piece when we make the next step. So now we're going to set the stops for that. This is called the rip stop, installed in the outrigger. So this is just going to come right up against the extension on the rip gauge that's set at one end. And now we're going to come down here to the other end and do the second one. Move that up against there. That's all there is to it. Now your stops are set. The next thing to do is put this away and we'll move the material up against the stops. Let's get this out of here. So now I'll just pull my sheet through, set it up against the rip stops and I'm ready to cut. Okay, so we made this rip nice and controlled. Everything stayed in place. So now let's just check it. See that we have in fact duplicated the part we wanted. So here's the piece that we used as a reference. And you can check that. See that's nice and flush on both sides. So we have succeeded in duplicating the part we wanted to with no measuring devices involved other than the piece itself. So now let's move over and start cutting them to length. Okay, so now we'll cut these long strips to length. Um, we're going to do the same process uh, to set the stop for this. Um, so I've got the rip gauge. I've got the piece that I cut yesterday. And let's just set this here. And so I'll just run that up against the tab and put the extension flush up against the end of the piece, tighten down the knob, and now we're ready to go. So I have a guide rail installed on our guide rail brackets here. And let's just drop this on. And now I'm going to come over here and set the flip stop. And uh, before we do this, let me just explain. Uh, the flip stop is dual sided for use on uh, two types of fences we have. 
And so the flag is longer on one side than the other. It's reversible um, because one of our fences, our surface mount fence will sit up higher, so we need a longer flag. But in this case, since I'm cutting such a short piece, I need to use the longer side to get close enough to the rail so it doesn't come down all the way, but doesn't affect what we're doing. So just in case anybody had a question about it. So now I'll take this tab again, put it against the guide rail and just run that flip stop right up against it, tighten that down, and that is our dimension. Okay, so we're all set. Let's start doing our cuts. So I'll just place this piece up against the fences. It is also being supported by this plate on the guide rail bracket, so we get good support close to the line of the cut. Now, anytime I'm cutting um, narrow pieces that don't span much of the width of the table, um, we all know that the rail can uh, bend a little bit under the weight of the saw, so it's best to put some scraps of um, the kind of material you're cutting under the rail to help support it. So now I'm ready to go, and let's make some parts. So here are my four pieces. You can see how easy that was. They're all the same thickness. Stand them up. They're all the same height. So you can see how easy this is. We have some burrs there. Um, you can see how easy this is to make a bunch of identical parts using the dashboard system, even small ones. Thanks for watching.